Well, Leon, you said you were going to shock the world. Uh, you did exactly that. I'm sure you're still processing everything right now. But, I mean, what's what's this moment like for you? <clears throat> um, it's hard to put it into words, you know. And that's the reason why I brought down in the, in, in the octagon because it, it all just came down. Everyone's seen my path. Everyone knows my path and how it went. And <clears throat> I've been saying all week that I believe that was the way it was meant to go, to build me into the man I am today, build my, my mental toughness and even though that was one of my worst performances, I did not feel good in there tonight, you know, and I went out there and, and knocked out the pound for pound, so <clears throat> it is what it is. Round one, you get a takedown. You're in mount. You're in back control. I mean, are, at that point, are you thinking, oh, this is my night. I'm walking away with the title in round one? Yeah, 100%. That's one of the, <laughs> that's one of the things that we drove, you know, and I said it all week. It, it wasn't going to be a striker versus wrestler match, you know. It was going to be um, a mixed martial arts match. And I'm sorry, I lost my voice. Oh, just crying. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's been a mixed martial, mixed martial arts match, and just I did. I got the takedown, I got the back. I need to um, sharpen up on my finishing. I was drilling it all, all camp, but he did a good job defending um, the, the neck, you know. And um, going into, it, I knew it was gonna be a tough fight. I said it all week. He, he is good, you know. Um, but I believe that I was a better man, and even though that was one of my worst, my worst performances, is what it is. Got a clean finish. So, obviously, there's a huge momentum shift after round one, two, three, and four. He's kind of taking over and settling in. I guess what's going through your head at that point? I mean, was frustration starting to set in? Obviously, you felt you weren't at your best. So, what was going through your mind at that point? Um, I don't know. I was just can't explain it. My body just wasn't reacting how it was meant to react. You know? I don't know whether it's altitude or what, what it was. But even when I was backstage watching other guys fight on the TV, everyone was getting tired and gassing out, like leaking everybody. I was like, why is everyone getting tired, you know? <laughs> but when, when I went out there, um, after the first round, I felt it. I felt like my, my body just weren't reacting. It wasn't, it wasn't like a cardio issue. It's more just like my body just wasn't physically reacting. And But I stayed focused. My coaches um, spurred me on. Um, just kept keep reminding me that that y y you're still in the fight. You're the best and fight to the end. And that combination, I was drilling with my coaches, um, with Henry and um, the other coaches, that cross head kick. And it landed perfectly. Yeah. I was going to say that, the high <laughs> kick. I mean, walk us through it. I mean, was it, 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 did you just throw it and hope? It, or is it, did nah. you see a tendency and say, I think he's going to lean that way? Yeah, 100%. He's got like a very boxing orientated style, you know, where he's like parrying a jab, slipping the jabs. And um, so I, I thought if it went same punch, same kick, um, it would land. I did it, I did it in, in the Bilal fight, but I ended, I ended in the eye poke. <laughs> well, it was the same combination, which is cross head kick, and it just landed perfectly. Edward, can I just work quick. So there was a talk ahead of time that you win, there's going to have to be a rematch. You're going to have to do it again. Does that excite you? Does that entice you? Or does it feel like, oh, man, why do I have to do it when I just beat the pound for pound? Um, no, nah, I knew going into it that more than likely we're going, we're going to have a rematch down the line, you know. And whether it's next or down the line, we're going to have a rematch. Um, he's been a long champion to say he's a pound for pound best all week. He's saying he's a pound for pound best. He, be, he believed it, you know, and... As I said in Octagon, the belt belongs to nobody. It don't belong to me or nobody. He, no man is meant to hold a belt for that long, you know. And I've, I said it all week. I felt like this is my moment. This is how it was meant to play out. All the layoff, all the COVID, all, all that. That's how, that's how it was meant to play out. And I just felt belonging all week. And we got a clean finish. That's the last thing for me. <clears throat> Dana said he would like to see your first title defense take place in England. Uh, I heard Wembley. Yeah. Nah, nah. <laughs> well, he kind of uh, walked it back afterwards and said, nah, maybe not Wembley. Nah, nah, nah. We nah, Wembley for sure, 100%. Made that Wembley. That, that has to be done. This, this has never been done before, you know, to have a guy from Birmingham in the UK um, did it from the UK. I know Bisson did it first, and but he did it from living in America, you know, so it was hard for people like me to relate to say, look, we can do it as well. I made a point to stay in the UK to achieve this, to show the other guys coming under me that look, we can if you believe in your country, believe in your team, you can achieve it. And that's what I did. I went out there and I achieved it from a little small gym in Birmingham. And it's, an, it's a crazy story, you know. Everyone knows my story and from being born in Jamaica to now winning the UFC World Title is a match story. Hey, look, right here. It's right here. What kind of legacy and how important is for you being the first Jamaican board world champion in this discipline? Um, for me, that's, that's history, you know, it's, it's never been done before. Um, but like I said, it's more for the people that grew up the way I grew up. You know, my path was rough. I, I know it, I felt it, you know, and even though I put on like a, a toughness, 
I, I felt the pressure, I felt the doubt, I felt them all saying it can't be done, but I'm from the trenches, like I said in, in my Pulsar interview, I was born with nothing, you know, I, we had to claw our way up and immigrate, immigrate to the UK um, to make a better life for ourselves, and I was able to change my life by getting, getting in the UFC, you know, my mum signed me up to MMA gym at the age of 17 to keep me out of trouble, and I used it to, ch to change our, our family's future, you know, which is... Um, I am proud of myself. I'm proud of everything I've achieved, and it's amazing. When Osman came to the octagon, he looks he looks so confident, but you did not make eye contact. That give you some strength to actually go ahead and win the first round. Um, no, not really. I just like I said, I didn't build him up to be this pound for pound quote everyone says he is. Everyone, <clears throat> I said it all week. I don't believe that he's a pound for pound. Yeah, you have to be better than just wrestling and boxing, you know, and um, I'm a mixed martial artist, I can do it all. I took him down in the first round, never been took down before, yeah, so I brought a 100% record, <laughs> took him down, got the back, um, going for the choke, he did a good job defending the choke. Um, after that, for some reason, my body just wasn't reacting, I don't know whether it's the attitude or what it was, but even when I was backstage and I was watching other guys, other guys fight like Luke and everyone else, everyone's getting tired and I'm guessing out for I don't, I didn't understand what it was, but, even, even on my worst night, I, been, I, I beat the pound for pound, so. Last question for me. You are a well-rounded <clears throat> fighter. So what's your plan to go in a 25 minutes like we used to see you fighting? Or you knew that you need the knockout to actually win the belt? I knew I needed a knockout then to win the belt because I was losing the round. <laughs> um, I knew then going into the fifth round, my coach, Coach Davis, is saying, like, listen, this is the last round now, like, Fix up, you know. We, we have worked too hard. The path has been too hard for you now to come here and give it away, you know. And that's the motivation I need. They, they know how to push my buttons, and that's what you did. And that, that, that was a combination that we we drove in the gym. Like I said, it's very boxing oriented. For us, it's slipping and moving, and um, we slip right into a head kick, you know. Thank you so much. Thank you, Leon Dunham. <coughs> Obviously, as the moment you win the fight, you got other welterweights calling you out, Hamza, Jorge. If it was up to you, would it still be Kamara next, or would you fight one of those guys just to give yourself a new opponent, or who are you feeling? Um, Jorge would be good, but he needs to go and get get a win, you know. Like having 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 him in the UK would be good. Uh, back back where the first incident happened, but if not, then let's run it back at Wembley with, with Kamara. You know, like I said, that was the best he had to offer. You know, and that was the worst I, I had to offer, and I still got to finish. So. Um, yeah, it, let, let them all come. Now they're all calling me out, you know. First it was that to me. Now they're all calling me out. <clears throat> I like how you keep specifying Wembley over the O2. The, to you, do you like look at the Fury fight there and look at the crowd and just think, oh, I could be the guy to bring that to the UK? Yeah, 100%. I've, I've always envisioned stuff like that, you know, to have opportunity to headline a card at Wembley in the UK, sold out arena with all the other UK guys. UK MMA is, is, is on the rise, you know, and I'm happy... Now to be the front runner, um, to motivate the guys to look, we can do more and there will be much more more champions coming out of the UK in the next five years and I truly believe that. Did you do the Conor McGregor Billy strap <coughs> after you knocked him out? <laughs> I don't know what I was doing, but <laughs> I was just happy, you know. <laughs> I was just I was just um, gassed. I don't know what, what, what I was doing, but yeah. Congrats. Over here, um, Salt Lake City reporter. What did you think of Salt Lake City? I know you got yourself some sneakers <coughs> Um, over the last couple of days, that crowd was very, very loud for you when you won. What'd you think of Salt Lake City, Utah? Um, it's a beautiful city, you know. When the first when the fire first got made, I was like, "Where the hell is Salt Lake City?" <laughs> but now, since being here, I, got, I went to like Airbnb. It's by the mountains, and it's just I went, I went like hiking and just it's a, it's a lovely outdoor spot, you know. So I'm happy to come back and visit one day, and without fighting, just be able to hike and enjoy it. Absolutely. Did you notice anything during your fight when it comes to altitude, the mountains, just anything that made you feel any different um, in Utah? Yeah, 100%. My, I felt like the altitude definitely affected my performance, you know. Um, even though I came out here like two and a half weeks early, um, yeah, my body just weren't reacting. I was reacting in training, you know. And um, But yeah, it's like I said, it's a beautiful city. Um, I, I enjoyed my time here. I didn't get... get to enjoy the food as much, but now tomorrow morning, wake up in the morning to go enjoy, enjoy some of the, the food, you know? Thanks. <clears throat> yeah. um, at the beginning of the fight, it seemed like Kamaru was, was very hyped up. The entire crowd was going crazy for him. By the end, people were obviously 
ex, ex, are uh, very happy for you and very excited for you. I'm just curious what that felt like to feel that turn of the crowd throughout the five rounds. Um, it, felt, it felt amazing. I don't really focus much on the crowd, you know. I've been in a situation where I was booed before and came out and winning. I don't really focus too much my energy on the crowd. I focus on being in a fight and getting a finish. I know if I go out there and perform, I know I can perform. The crowd will turn and they'll, they'll, they'll be on my side, you know. He, he was the champion, so it was right to chair him, you know. He's, he's deserved of the chair. He's been a long reigning champion. Um, but I said it all week that I believe I was a better man, and tonight I proved that. Would you say those first four rounds, four and a half rounds, I should say, were some of the toughest you've ever faced facing Kamaru? Um, yeah, it was a good. He done well. He done well. You know, he's he, he's, a, he's very good at what he does. He's a pressure fighter, um, wrestling, boxing, and he, he done good. Like I said, that was his best performance. That was the best he had to offer, and that was the worst I had to offer. So, in, if we do have a rematch, is it's gonna be a totally different story. Last question for me: If you could go back and talk to yourself seven years ago, what would you say to yourself after losing to Kamaru seven years ago? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Just keep believing. Like. Just stay, stay believing in yourself, you know. I know the path was good, would have been hard, you know. I took the hardest path in the UFC to get to this position, you know. Ten fights in a row, pandemic hit. I had to sit down for two years, couldn't fight. Everyone doubted me, saying, ah, you had too long of a layoff to come back and fight the pound for pound best. I said, listen, I am the best. I truly believe that in my heart. And um, no one else believed it apart from me and my team and my family, you know. And I went out there and proved it. <clears throat> Leon here in the middle. That's your third knockout win in the final two minutes of a fight. How are you able to carry your power so late into the fights? Just by my my coaches, my conditioning, my gym. You know, we we stay focused throughout the fight. Even if you're down, just always believe in yourself. Always work hard, and that's it. Really, I just I, I, I got a good training camp back in Birmingham um, with Joe. Clean combinations and. I told you I was, I was approaching this fight as a brand new fight. I wasn't looking at it seven years ago when I first fought Kamar Usman. I looked, I looked at it as a brand new opponent. What he does now is, is flaws and what he does good. And tonight I, I exposed one of his flaws, you know. Definitely. Thank you. Leon, right here. Uh, you did not throw out any <coughs> trash talk leading up to the, you know, to the fight or anything. Kamaru kept, you know, trying to egg it on, trying to get you to say something to him. The, thing, the best you came out with was the Terry Crews jab, <laughs> which is hilarious, right? Um, does that make the victory a little sweeter, knowing you didn't have to take that route, knowing you didn't have to bring the heat and, and sell the fight or anything? Um, yeah, a little bit, you know. But at the same time, I said it. I, I got no beef with Kamaru, you know. It, it, like, outside fighting, there's nothing that I don't like about him. You know what I mean? He, he's doing well for himself. He's providing for his family, and that's it. I haven't got no issue issues with, with the guy, you know. And I, just, I just thought the hype was getting to his head. He started to believe that that the belt was, was his and no one else can have it. And that's, I told, as I said in Octagon, the belt belongs to nobody. No, no man is meant to hold the belt for that long. And that's what I believed in my heart and I went out there and I proved it. And the lack of glove touch before the fight started, was that like spoken before or just in the moment? In the moment? Man, I, th I thought we would have touched gloves to be fair because we were shaking hands all week. <laughs> so yeah. when you, when we didn't touch my hands before, okay, cool. And that, that was it, you know. And I was the first guy to take him down, first guy to knock him out. And, Let's see how he comes back. Congratulations. Thank you. Hey, Leon in the middle here. Uh, Drake lost a little bit of pocket change on you today. Uh, <laughs> do you have a message for him? Do you hope he bets on you next time? What's the, uh, what's the sentiment towards Drizzy Drake? Um, yeah, next time, bet on me and get, get one of them Rolexes that you gave Molly and, and, and Paddy. <laughs> Send one my way. Hey, Leon. Uh, so when Dana first announced this matchup, I told him I thought <laughs> that you were the dark horse in this fight. When we spoke earlier this week, I said that you were one of the most underrated fighters in the UFC. Your performance tonight has silenced that. Do you feel like you still have anything to prove? Um, yeah, 100%. Like I said, that, that wasn't my best performance. You know? I did not feel myself in there. So I know once I check my phone and go online, all of our fighters will be like, oh, I, 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 I want to fight him. You know? and so yeah, definitely, I feel like there's much more I got the offer. That wasn't my best performance. And so what would you have done different? <clears throat> um, everything. Like the first round, is, you know what I mean? It, it was meant to be like the first round. I believe like I am number one. So to be number one, you cannot be losing rounds to, to people like Kamaru. Even though he is he's good, if you truly believe in heart, you're number one. You should be like, go out there and dominate everything. And I didn't get to do for the whole rounds tonight. So, yeah. Yeah, but in order to win, you got to beat the champ. 
you had to knock the tramp out. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what I did. Clean. Thank you. A wonderful performance. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm near here. Um, you keep saying, you know, no one's meant to hold the belt for that long. In your mind, however long you are the champion, what do you want to represent as a champion? What do you want this reign, you know, to, to mean to yourself, to other people? Um, I want it to me just like, just be yourself, you know. I didn't have to change the, the way I am. I didn't change my personality, so dressing different and dyeing my hair and being weird, you know. Just be yourself, believe in yourself and work hard. Like, the social media generation, they think, like, as long as you be different, you can achieve great stuff. You don't, if you work hard, believe in yourself, you can achieve it. And I, I prove that, you know, like, that's it. Hard work wins all the time. I said it all the time, like, I'm not gonna change, I'm gonna keep being who I am. And now look at me, I am the USC world champion. To be born in Jamaica, in the zinc, like my house was like a wooden house, in that wooden house was my bedroom, my living room, my bathroom, my dining room, in one house with a zinc roof. And now I'm here in Utah, winning the world title is a wild story, you know, and I'm proud of myself and that's it. And we know everything you've been through to get here, we don't need to go over it again, but, um is it extra gratifying? I mean, if you had finished that choke in the first round or something, obviously, yeah, it would have been great. But to do it that late in the fight, in that fashion, down on the cards, like, does that feel like it's meant to be? And is it more satisfying sitting up there? Yeah, 100%. I think it, it was just my luck for it to go like that as well, you know. <laughs> it, it, it's all been like a mad road. It was just my luck for it to be that down on the scorecards and come back and, and knock him out, you know. So I, I'd love to see how he comes back now because when, when you think you're, the, you're that great, and get, and get knocked out clean like that. You change people, you know, so let's see. Leon, uh, 56 seconds away from losing the fight, you throw that kick, you connect, he was stiff, he falls. What's going through your head right in that moment? Um, you seen it? I just broke down, you know, like, it all just came on top of me, like, the, everything I've been through and the road, the path I had to take to get here and, uh, it, was, it was difficult to put into words like what it meant to me and I know how much it means to my family and, and people that grew up the way I grew up, you know, and it all just came down on me. It was hard to explain it and put it into words apart from tears, you know. Did you know he was out as soon as the Yeah, day? yeah. If, the way he folded, I thought <laughs> he's done, you know, and I felt it. It was like a clean, clean, clean head kick, clean as, as it could get, you know. Uh, right here real quick on your right. Uh, or, yeah, left. Sorry, my bad. Um, earlier, Dana White said that you probably wouldn't be skipping in here after five rounds. Are you in pain, or are you feeling good after just all the adrenaline and holding onto that belt? I'm good. <clears throat> I'm good. My, my shin hurts a bit from the head kick. A few lumps in my head. But it's a fight day. You don't go in the rain without getting wet. Got a little bit wet tonight. It's all good. Thank you. Appreciate it.